Welcome to this latest edition of the Real Bill Podcast, episode 761. Uh, I'm your host, Surreal Gerald Quinn. This again, a special edition. We as we are starting season four, episodes one and two of Snowfall. Um, episodes, uh, of course, were titled "Reentry" and "Wait." Um, we have waited basically a year and a half uh, for this show to come back. It was ex- I was excited to see the show come back. Uh, now I had not watched. I rewatched season three, like in, I want to say August in the summertime. So I wasn't that far removed from the story uh, from which what I transpired in the, in the previous season, but it still, you know, still took a couple of few minutes to kind of get caught up on uh, our characters and, and, and what was going on and what was going on from that standpoint. But I, I thought that both of these were strong episodes. I myself personally would have rather have seen them do like an hour and 20 or hour 30 minute episode all into one. I really, they really could have, they could have combined these two episodes to be honest with you. Um, but regardless of that, I think that they were very, these episodes were very good. Uh, both these episodes were, were strong episodes. Uh, themes that, were, that came out of these two episodes, I would say playing both sides and fallen king. So we're gonna go through our characters to kind of get a recap on where they're at in season four. And of course, we begin with Franklin Saint. Now, Franklin, of course, was shot three times by, by Melody. Of course, she, for her, you know, she's avenging the death of her, the avenged, avenging, was, was attempting to avenge the death of her father at the hands of, of one Franklin Saint. Andre, of course, uh, who was a cop. You remember Andre. Um, Franklin shot Andre in his house. Andre, of course, was trying to take down Franklin and his whole organization. Um, so Franklin right now is kind of in a vulnerable state where he's struggling breathing. He has a cane. Um, he's not the man anymore. Even though he's in a position of power, he really doesn't have, he, he was not, he did not come off as a, as a drug kingpin last night in these, uh, in these two episodes last night. He really didn't. Now, I thought, the, I thought the, the show did a great job at stripping his character because you can't, listen, you can't get shot three times and just bounce back like nothing happened. I thought that was very important to them, for them to show the emotional toll and the physical toll that that had, that that, that, would, that, would, nat- that, that would naturally take, uh, take on you. And, and let's be honest, he has knocked down a couple pegs um, you know, Louis and Jerome are, you know, took care of his business while he was, uh, while he was away. Louis has her own restaurant, Jerome's dressed up. So they took care of the drugs and the money and they basically ran, um, you know, ran the show while he, you know, while he was recovering. And we see Franklin go basically from drug kingpin to being, uh, trapped in his, uh, parents in, in, in his room. I mean, he's basically on, he's basically on house arrest <laughs> in this episode. Like he's living with his parents, you know. So that that was a I thought the show did an excellent job at, at depicting that. Uh, we need you need to see Franklin, his character get rebuilt. You need to see him uh, in this in this place uh, where he's struggling. Uh, but again, he's still and you and through, we'll talk later on in this episode. Um, he made, you know, he made some mistakes. Uh, so uh, again, I, I was very pleased with the introduction, the reintroduction of one uh, Franklin Saint. Man Boy versus Scully. So Franklin, of course, is the supplier to both these drug dealers, or I said dealers, both these drug kingpins who are running, who are basically controlling the streets in Southern California. And of course, the story wanted to tell you this, you know, Man Boy and Scully represent the Bloods and the Clips, Crips. Let, let's be honest about that. This is 1984, 1985. Um, they have wet, you know, this violence is out of control. These two guys, and you know, these two guys are leading, uh, num- uh, leading these powerful gangs 
and are at war with one another. Uh, we'll talk more about the the Scully scene, um, the Scully scene at the funeral later on. But these are two characters. These these two characters I forgot. I forgot this from season three. These two characters are, are actually related. I mean, it was Man Boy who introduced um, who introduced uh, Franklin and, and his crew to Scully. So they're both receiving drugs from um, from Franklin. But basically, Franklin has no control over their actions in regards to what's going on, uh, on the, in regards to all the violence that is going on on the street. We get to Leon and Franklin. Um, Leon is doing his own thing. Uh, Leon, um, again, when Franklin was away, and I, again, this this is you know this is real life. This is how the game works. There's there's no shortage of a vacuum when in the drug game when the when the big man goes away, or when a drug kingpin gets locked up, or he gets shot, or he gets put, or he gets killed. There's always going to be somebody to fill that void. Um, so again, Franklin injured, Leon has held down the projects. He's taking care of business, and he's kind of you know Leon is in a place of where, like, dude, I'm not your number two no more. I, I'm run, I'm number one. I'm number one. I got, you know, I'm holding it down out here. You know, hold, I'm, I'm controlling the projects. We see Leon, you know, reaping the fruits of being the top guy. You know, he's, Franklin comes up, you know, tries to meet him. Leon's having sex with a girl. Um, Franklin uh, wants to discuss what's going on with Man Boy and Scully. Leon's just like, look, man, let them, let them, leave them be. Uh, don't get involved with it. Franklin, you know, said, of course, Franklin, you can't, can't do that. Doesn't have that. That's not an option. And then Franklin invites him to uh, the New Year's party at, at Louis' place, um, at Louis' club. And we, and then we learn that, um, we learn that really, we start to learn that, that Louis and Leon have, uh, have some issues. So Leon's in a place, listen, it didn't take long you knew this, that this was coming from me from that conversation that Franklin had in season three, late in season three, when he when he checked Leon in, in the car. Remember, he's you know, remember Leon does not like Man Boy at all over the Wanda, over you know the Wanda stuff. Wanda, of course, it was his ex girlfriend who you know turned crackhead, and Leon never liked, never trusted, never liked Man Boy. Franklin was of course telling him it was all about the business. Don't get don't get caught in your feelings. So that lingered from that definitely lingered into this season. And now that now that Franklin seemingly is not in a position of power in regards to, you know, he's limping, had trouble, have trouble breathing. You see people seemingly and you see people try to somewhat take try, try to take advantage of that and not view him, uh, not view him the same. And Leon is one of those people. Leon, Leon at the, you know, wants to be you know thinks of himself as now and at number one in terms of running the projects so they the show immediately wastes no time with the leon and franklin uh separation so teddy and gustavo they are down in tijuana mexico they're working together moving weapons or trying to acquire weapons they get busted by some cops and you see that Teddy had a truck full of avocados instead of a truck full of weapons. Now, I thought initially when this happened that Teddy was setting them up and really he had the weapons somewhere else. It turns out that Teddy did not get the, um, not get the weapons from his distributor. So he has to go deal with Avi and he's doing that as well as trying to appease the local, um, the local local police he thought teddy thought he had a deal with the local police with the local police force it turns out that that, that deal was is, is that that deal it was did not turn out to be a good deal by um that that deal was a bad deal in the um in the minds of the local police force they are so they want they want to switch up the terms of the deal and now teddy has two issues two major issues he doesn't have any guns and he doesn't have the local police force in his pocket. 
So he, you know, Teddy, like Franklin, you know, is dealing with a lot of things, uh, dealing with a lot of things in, in terms of moving the weapons. Gustavo, good to see him back in the mix. Um, Gustavo is is purely, we know Gustavo is muscle. We also know Gustavo has a brother and, and Gustavo has family in, in, in Mexico. The brother, and we'll, we will talk later on about what transpired with Gustavo's brother and his uh, family. So that, that kind of is a recap in terms of where our main characters are, are at. Um, it's 1984, 1985. Um, you have uh, just, you know, again, you have the, basically Bloods versus Crips. You have just guns and guns and drugs have completely taken over the streets in South LA and bodies are dropping left and right. Franklin is seeing the consequences of his actions and how it has affected not only the community, but affected his entire family, uh, his entire family, to be honest with you. Everybody, he has everybody caught up in this, uh, you know, working with him, of course, with Jerome and Louie. You know, his parents know what time it is. They know what time it is in regards to um, what Franklin is doing and where he's at. And again, Franklin, you know, is in a very, very interesting place right now, caught, you know, between these two gangs who both could easily kill him, but they won't, but they're not gonna kill him because he's their, he is their main, he is their, 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 their number one and their main uh, drug supplier. So that is, that is, a, that is a recap kind of on where our, our major characters are at right now. Uh, we'll, now we'll go through the best scenes over the course of the two episodes. Scully uh, at the funeral home with Franklin. So this was an episode, this, this scene was an episode one. So we see that one of Man Boy's people, uh, Man Boy, one of Man Boy's gang members has killed uh, one of St Scully's people's. Franklin comes in to pay his respects and hope to negotiate a truce and calm the, you know, calm the, uh, the waters between Scully and Manboy. And, you know, Scully was like, wasn't having it at all. Scully's like, look, um, it's not going to happen basically. And he looks up and you see, he sees, we see a, a, a statue of the crucifix with Jesus being pinned to the cross. And he says, I wonder what it, you know, wonder how they got Jesus, got Jesus, um, hung, hung up Jesus like that, basically. Um, so, you know, at that point that something was going to go down with Scully. We didn't know quite how it was going to go down, but you knew what that, what that was going to lead to um, in that funeral, uh, uh, in that, in this particular scene. The actor who plays Scully, of course, DeAndre Bonds, you see him in, you see him in, uh, the wood, saw him in Sunset Park. He he's phenomenal as this character because he, you know, it's, it's a very tricky character to play because you can easily he's got he's he's crazy. He, I mean, he's he's out of his mind, but he does it with a controlled discipline, and he doesn't he, he even last season there was no overacting. By this, by, by by DeAndre Bonds and by this particular ca ca character, none whatsoever. Um, when he said, "I wonder how they got Jesus up there," again, you knew some treacherous was was going to happen <laughs> before uh, for too long. Um, we see so Leon and Franklin at the club. So Leon, so Franklin, of course, invited Leon to the club to Louis' New Year's New Year's Eve party, um, and this is where we find out that that Franklin, that Leon and Louis have a beef. Uh, Leon doesn't respect Louis whatsoever, and they really, they really never really truly ever got along uh, because Leon. Because let's be honest, Leon is is kind of like a. You know, kind of like Sonny Corleone, like he doesn't think he's not strategic with his thinking. He doesn't think things through. He he responds and reacts off emotion. He doesn't. It's not about business with Leon. It's about emotion. And Louis is the polar opposite. Louis is the strat strategist. Louis is the, is the, is the chess player. You know, she's. I can make a case that Louis probably is the most important uh, part of Franklin's operation. 
in terms of being the brains, to be honest with you. So they go, so we find out that they don't like each other. They go, they go at it. And Franklin basically says, Franklin gets frustrated with Leon um, at the club because he's like, yo, we need to, uh, you know, I, you know, we need to kind of get this, get this thing situated with man dog, with mad, uh, with man, excuse me, man boy and uh, Scully. Leon's is like, I don't, you know, you know, I, I don't fuck with either one of them. I don't, you know, let's not, don't even get involved with that. Uh, Franklin, and you know, he pulls a Leon and then what, so what sets Leon off that part, that was part of it too. But what really sets Leon off is Gustavo. Franklin, of course, invited Gustavo and Teddy to the club. Again, chop it up, talk business, celebrate. So Leon blames, if you want to go back to season two, Leon blames Gustavo for the killing of, of, of their friend, uh, of their friend um, who was doing some, who was dealing on the side. If you remember, go back to season two, Franklin ended up killing it. Franklin ended up having to do, having, and Franklin ended up killing, killing a dude and Leon blame, blame, blames Gustavo for that. So he pulls a gun on Gustavo. Franklin steps in, steps in, uh, steps in and says, you know, this shit, you know, it's not going down, right? You know, it's not going down. Tells Gustavo and, and Carter, or you know, Gustavo and, and Teddy to, uh, Teddy and Carter are the same person, you know, tells them to basically leave the room. And then, and then you know, then you see Leon get in an argument with everybody, whether it's Jerome, Louis. Franklin, um, and basically Franklin and then Leon argue at the club, and Leon says, you know, basically, you know, I'll fuck you, I'm not messing with you no more, uh, and he has lost his supply with Franklin. So now, so again, typical Leon, Leon, Lee, like, yo, Leon, you don't have to agree with Franklin, but he is your drug supply. So now you just cut yourself off at the knees by giving up the only drug supply that you have. In order to control, in order to control those projects, so Leon leaves out there angry with no drug supply, with no drug, with no drug supply. After Franklin again, for the second time in his many episodes, seemingly checks him about his, uh, you know, about him um, just operating on emotion and not looking at the business view of what they do. Uh, Leon Franklin says, "I, I would have thought that you would have grown up by now." But you still, you know, you still act like basically act like a little kid. And he was right. He was right 100 um, percent Now, I can you can make a case that Franklin maybe probably shouldn't have invited Avi, not Avi, uh Oso, Gustavo, which whose nickname is Oso, considering that situation probably so that probably wasn't the smartest move on Franklin's part, uh, from that standpoint. Um we go to uh We go to the warehouse, not the warehouse. We go to the scene with Franklin and Alton. Alton, of course, plays Franklin's father at the end of episode one. So Franklin has decided to set up the gang, set up Man Boy, and set up Man Boy and Scully to go at each other and basically take each other out. Now, this was and now this was not the plan that Teddy. Uh, that Teddy had in, that had in mind. Teddy told Franklin, "Pick a side, pick one of them, pick one of them, side with one of them, and take the other one out." Initially, you thought that Franklin was going to take um, was going to take out Man Boy, so he gave he gives uh, Scully he gives Scully some guns uh, from the military military guns. And by the way, Franklin has a new bodyguard as well. And of course, played by we, we, if you're a Wire fan, you know this. You know him as Monk, who was one of Marlowe's dudes from the Wire. He plays Franklin's uh, number one. Uh, plays Franklin's number one bodyguard. He has military training experience from you know coming out straight out the military. I don't. know, I think it was out the. I think I want to say it was out the Marines, but but you know you could tell that he's serious about his business. He's Franklin's number one bodyguard now. Um, so he goes along with Franklin and to go, he goes into Scully's place to sell to sell them this, these guns that will help them win the war versus man boy. And he, so we initially think that, Hey, all right. So he, he listened, you know, he's listening to uh, Teddy and he's going to choose, he's going to choose Scully over man boy. Then in the next scene, you see him choose, you see him go, go to man boy and say, Hey, let me help you 
take out Scully. So Franklin, again, has decided to you to help to uh, have the two guys basically kill each other. So he has a plan that, and we'll get to the plan later on. He has he comes up with a plan to get them to take out each other. Now, let me get back to Louis. Louis advised him they were making a decision on which one to to take out. Who who are we better off with? Man boy or Scully? Louis said we are better we Louis said we are better off with Scully. As crazy as he is, he, he stays in line. And the bottom line is Scully is, you know, Scully, you know, it's not gonna last long. Probably more likely because Scully, because first of all, he gets high. He gets high. And number one, he's not a rational thinker as well. He's not, he's an emotional thinker. He's he's off the hinges, he's unpredictable. Man boy, Louis recognizes that man boy is like is like a is like a version, is like a similar version of Franklin. Man boy is 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 careful about his moves. Man boy wants man boy is young, he's ambitious, he wants to take over everything. Louis tells him flat out, as soon as we take out Scully, man boy will be coming for us. So to me, the move would have been to take out man boy, not Scully. But Franklin, again, outthinks himself and decides to that decides that he, he was he wants to take out both of them. So we go to um Franklin and his father. This is at the this is at the end. This is at the end of episode one. Now, the plan is already in motion. Um, Franklin pulls up. Franklin has a gun. Of course, he's limping, and right he's about to walk out the house. Right before he comes about to walk out of the house, his dad uh, says, "Is that a twenty uh, twenty two a twenty five or is that?" A, a 45, he says, I see the 45 that's in your waistband. Where, you know, where, where, what you, you know, where are you about to, what you're about to do? So, you know, again, the dad knows what time it is, knows where his son, the parents know what Franklin's involved in. They have, I, I think they almost accepted it, uh, to be honest with you. And, you know, his dad, you know, his dad, you know, his dad knows the streets. His dad, of course, was a ex Black Panther back in his time. Um, they have this scene is a powerful scene because his dad starts to talk about instead of chastising him and saying, you know, what are you doing? You're going to get yourself killed. He tells this story about when they were uh, when Franklin was younger, and he, you know, basically made him and his mom and 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 his mom watch Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee like a million times. So he says to Franklin, like, you know, let's, you know, let's. You know, I got the VCR. I just got this VCR. Let me let's pop in some tapes. You know, let's you know let's spend some quality time together. Let's pop some corn, and you know let's you know let's go let's let's take it back. And you think about you think about how first of all the idea of of the relationship between a father and a son. You had that going on. Then you have the fact that when when this is happening, when this was happening back in the day. His father was not on drugs. Franklin wasn't in the drug game. So this is a time, this is a time of innocence in both of their lives. They both have been through hell and back again. Franklin being in the drug game, getting shot. His father, of course, was a was was a drug addict who now is, is running his own um, center for drug addicts. So he's he's done it and his father went to jail, of course. He's and they've both been in jail. So I thought it was again, it was a powerful scene. And you think for a second that Franklin's gonna stay and not go out, but he ends up walking out. Um, he ends up walking out to go on to the next scene, which we're gonna describe. And that is, of course, the warehouse shootout. So Franklin had it set up to where both Manboy and Scully were gonna meet each other at the warehouse without knowing, without knowing it. Um, man boy was there first. So man, boy, they had, so man boy is, is, is there with his crew first hiding in a warehouse. Uh, you have Jerome there, you have peaches there. Franklin's like one of Franklin's other bodyguards and henchmen. And of course, Franklin is there 
uh, with uh, his his number one, his number uh, his his new number one bodyguard um, bodyguard, and we see Scully come in second. Again, keep in mind, Scully is is high as a kite. Uh, he put some drugs. I don't know what he put some stuff in his ear that got him high. Even this guy that was driving the car was like, "Yo, we about to, like, what are you doing? Like, we we about to ambush these dudes and you getting high?" And you know, Scully, typical Scully, like, "No, I need to see all the signs." So Scully comes in with the big gun, with the gun from um, from the military that Franklin sold him, that could shoot from basically a mile away. One of those military guns. Um, not quite, not a sharpshooter, but it had, I think it might've had a scope on it, but it's kind of like, a, in a way it's a machine gun. I, don't, I forgot what kind of, forgot what type of gun it was. Um, and Scully, despite how high he was, could feel that something was off. He could feel that something was off. And again, he told Franklin, don't cross me basically. When they met, when Franklin met the first time, when he met with Franklin, uh, about the plan to take out Manboy. He said, don't, he says, I will destroy your whole world if you take, if you cross me. So Scully says, I smell some rats. So Scully, they, they're in the warehouse, says, I smell some rats. At the same time, you have uh, Manboy's people, Manboy, and along with another one of his dudes are hiding in this, um, one of these is, I think it's kind of like a garbage trunk or something. One of these is, is something that was in the warehouse to where they they were hiding inside of it. Um, and man boys, boy, man boys, one of man boy soldiers, he's nervous. He's, you know, he was, a, I, I think he was, he probably had gotten high before they came there. So he's acting nervous. You get, you know, Peach is trying to calm, basically saying, yo, calm, yo, calm the fuck down, calm down. You So he, he jumps out and then he jumps out after Scully shoots the light and then all hell breaks loose. So then a bunch of shots are fired. We see Jerome shoot somebody. We see man boy shoot. We see just a bunch of ooh, bunch of guns get shot. A bunch of just, so it's just a bunch of, it's just a bunch of shooting. And what comes out of that, Scully gets wounded, but not killed. Um, man boy lies to Franklin about killing Scully. So he thought, I guess, I don't, I don't know if he thought he had killed him, but he, he, you know, he says, he says he killed him. Franklin ends up finding out that Scully is not dead. And of course, Scully is, you know, besides himself. Scully is completely besides himself. And of course, he, he wants Franklin in the worst way after that, after that, uh, after that shootout. Um, again, the only, no, nobody mainly got, Peaches got wounded. A bunch of guys that a bunch of guys that we don't even know were shot and killed, but the main characters, the main players, Scully, Man Boy, Franklin, Jerome, all survived. And after this scene, of course, Franklin and they are they are in chase mode. Uh, they are in retreat mode. They don't have they Franklin. Keep in now. Keep this in mind. Franklin does not have with 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 no Leon around. Franklin does not have the muscle to stave off these two beasts in Scully and Man Boy. He doesn't have the muscle. He has, he has, you know, he has Jerome, he got Louie. He has the one milk, the dude, his peaches and the milk, the, the dude, this new guy from the military, but he still has the weight on the military, the dude. So he calls in the dude from the military to, to, uh, to bring in some reinforcements, to bring in some guys, but you know, that that's gonna take some time. So Franklin is on, you know, it's basically, after that warehouse shooting, Franklin basically tried to get his parents to, to move out, to, to go to a hotel. They refused to. And his mom says, you fix it. And we know his dad isn't scared, isn't scared of anything. So he, you know, he's basically saying, I'm not going anywhere. I didn't run the first time. When you got out of jail, I'm not running this time. So they refused, they're, they refused to run. Um, and now, again, Franklin is at the... You know, he he's right in the cross chairs, crosshairs with these with, with Scully and Manboy, especially Scully, who of course thinks and, and was right in terms of thinking that it was a it was a setup. So you had that. Gustavo finding his family dead. This ended ended the episode two. So 
give you a little context on this, Gustavo took his brother to visit the local sheriff who Teddy, who Teddy was trying to pay off. Now the, the local sheriff says, the first deal you guys tried to come up with, that deal is no good, it's no longer on the table, it wasn't a good deal. So Teddy tries to re renegotiate. Um, and then the sheriff has that sheriff, which foreshadowed what was gonna happen, has a conversation with Gustavo's brother, who's of course in a wheelchair, was shot back in the day, um, you know, in, in a gang war or at when he was when he was in the in the in the gangs. And he tells him, you know, the sheriff basically says, uh, gives a warning, a subtle warning, it's not a blatant warning, but a subtle warning about you know, about dealing with his, about that, about uh, Gustavo's brother and dealing with his enemies. So you had that. So give you some, just to give you some background on that, um, Gustavo and Teddy are in a vulnerable position. Teddy goes to, 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 uh, to the Avi um, and he shoots one of, Teddy shoots one of Avi's people in the, in the ear and, you know, basically put, puts Avi in a position where, you know, He's like, look, give me my guns, period. I want my guns. So fast forward to the last scene. Gustavo walks in and finds his brother dead, stabbed, and his wife uh, throat slashed, but could not find the kids. Of course, there was an earlier scene where Teddy, where they were at a birthday party where Gustavo was a wrestler. Of course, going back to season one when he was, uh, you know, was a wrestler. Uh, so he can't find, couldn't find any of the kids, but his brother and the wife are dead. And now, you know, now, now that will set up Gustavo going back to being, you know, basically a killer. That's, that's what I think that, that's what I think that, that led, that, that was going, that's going to lead to. So those are your best scenes, um, of the episode. A couple of things, uh, Melody. So we 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 get a, we get caught up with Melody. She's found Jesus. Melody is a full Christian. She's living with her aunt. A reporter goes to visit her to try to dig up some stuff on what's what's going on in neighborhoods. The reporter um, basically is a veteran reporter, so she wants to she she basically was digging up information on on Andre, uh, trying to find out you know what is behind all of this all of this killing in the neighbor in these neighborhoods. Um, Melody seemingly was drugged out in her own right. She had a cross on, she's quoting Bible scriptures, but she seemed, she, she, she seemed, Melody seemed out of it a little bit, like she was on some prescription drugs. And it, it kind of felt like, felt that way. Um, she really doesn't get a reporter much. Um, the aunt initially thought that Melody was going to, that the reporter was trying to implicate Melody in the killing of, uh, or in the shooting of Franklin. And of course, Franklin, Franklin did not testify against Melody. Uh, he said he didn't see who shot him. And the aunt mentions this. Uh, the reporter necessarily doesn't believe it, but doesn't have the proof that Melody actually killed, that she tried to kill Franklin. All she knows is, you know, Andre is dead and a whole bunch of shit is going on in the, in the neighborhood. So she started, we see her start to dig. So, you know, we'll see what, we'll see what they do. I, I'm very, um, I'm intrigued to see what they're gonna do with the Melody character um, after this. I didn't know, I thought coming into the season that there were not too many places that they can go with her, but maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll be wrong or maybe, you know, maybe I'll, you know, maybe we'll see what happens with that. Also, Franklin's old flame, a uh, girl named you know, he called T, and Tanasi. She uh, comes up with some valuable information on Scully being alive. Initially, of course, Manboy told Scully that he was that he, that he was dead, that he shot him, and uh, he Franklin got was able to get confirmation from uh, from T Tanasi that Scully was not dead. Uh, this, this, of course, this is going to be a love interest. Uh, it, this is going to be a love interest. He, Franklin, spends the night at her place. They didn't, they didn't do anything, but you can tell that, that throughout the course of the season that that's, that that love is going to get that's going to get uh, rekindled. So overall, again, I thought it was a very again uh, MVP of the episode is Scully. Uh, I thought that guy's performance, DeAndre Bond's performance, was 
was a performance of the episode. I thought he was tremendous in all his scenes, especially the scene in the funeral. Um, so I thought that he was the MVP of the episode. Listen, I don't, I think Franklin, the idea that Franklin about the ambush, I think that that's one of those things that if it doesn't work, you're in, you're in trouble. I think to me, he should have listened to Louie and took out and took out Man Boy, to be honest with you. But I think that the, the writers had to show Franklin is not it, making a mistake, you know, and, and miscalculating. He's not, you know, he, of course, he's physically not there and he shouldn't be, he mentally shouldn't be that not there. It's not there as, 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 as well. Franklin from season two, season three would not have made that mistake of trying to, to do this, especially from Franklin from season three would not have made that mistake of, of the ambush in the warehouse. And he would not, he doesn't make that mistake. But again, th but again, this is a different Franklin um, in season four. So overall, I thought it was the strongest, strong two episodes. Again, I, early, and I said this earlier in the podcast, I much rather have, have had them um, do an hour and 30 minute episode or hour and 25 minute episode. But, you know, two down and eight to go. Uh, episode three will, will be uh, next week. We'll see what happens, uh, you know, coming off Gustavo's family being dead, um, <clears throat> Scully being, being after Franklin and, you know, how Franklin, and also one last thing. So Franklin is also in business, of course, with the cop that was Andre's partner. He sends him to arrest some 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 gang members from Scully's from Scully's neighborhood. They get to the get they get to the to where Scully's at and see basically is like a military fortress. And he initially initially the cop whose name is Nix thinks that is a trap. He goes to uh, Franklin's Franklin's father's uh, rehabilitation center. The uh, that rehabilitation rehab center that he's running. No, nah, it's not a rehab center, but a home for recovering addicts. It's a home for recovering, a homeless shelter for recovering addicts. Um, and basically tries to threaten Franklin's dad or tries to send a message to, to Franklin through his dad. The dad says, hey, you know, you want to say anything to Franklin? You can tell him, you tell him yourself. And then you see the reporter who knows him from back in the day, knows he's a dirty cop, kind of kind of intervene to uh Auden's defense so we'll see how that relationship she's gonna she's so she's gonna be all over the place she's gonna be picking she's gonna be looking into franklin's parents which she's already has she'll be looking into melody so she's she's gonna be kind of snooping around for a story in terms of what's going on uh throughout the course of, of this season and in, in in the neighborhoods in compton and uh, los angeles um so overall i think i thought the episodes were very good uh, we'll be back next week with episode three, season four, episode three of Snowfall. Glad, great to have the show back after uh, this, you know, year and a half hiatus due to COVID. Uh, I will. This is the Real Deal podcast with. Excuse me. This is the Real Deal podcast with Surreal Gerald Quinn. I will see you next time. Of course, as always, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will be posting this episode up before the evening is out. Have a great, great rest of your Thursday. I'm out.